To paint these old-fashioned shutters, we could do it the old-fashioned way with the paintbrush, but to paint this wicker chair with this paintbrush would take forever. So I'm going to be using a power paint sprayer to do the project, which will be about 10 times faster and a lot more fun. We're using an exterior paint today for our project, and it's a good idea anytime you're using the power paint sprayer to thin your paint just a little bit with paint thinner. This will keep your nozzle from getting clogged up. Go ahead and fill your cup three-fourths of the way full. Be sure not to fill it all the way up because you need to leave room to add some paint thinner. And what you want to do is just put a little bit of paint thinner in it first. That way you can keep coming back thinning if you need to and it's not too thin right off the top. It's also a good idea to wear your safety goggles and a mask when you're painting and paint in a well-ventilated area. Never paint near an open flame. I've also put down a drop cloth to collect any overspray onto the patio. Let me show you how to attach this back on. See this lever here? This locks it in place. So be sure you have it to the side and these grooves snap right in just like that. Then you can lock it. Now we're ready to attach it to our air compressor and test it out. a good idea to practice before you actually begin painting. You can practice on a piece of newspaper or a piece of cardboard, whatever you have. I'm practicing on the back of these shutters, which no one will see anyway, and we're going to paint them to keep them from warping. By practicing, you can get a good feel for the gun, and also you can adjust your spray pattern and spray amount to have a nice smooth finish. This power sprayer has two controls. The top control will adjust your spray pattern and the bottom control adjusts the amount of paint coming out. You also want to stay six to ten inches away from whatever it is you're painting. Once you know that you have your gun adjusted properly, then you're ready to paint. I'm just finishing up my second coat of paint. Look how nice you can see the texture and the wood grain on the shutters. If I had used just a regular paintbrush, the thickness of the paint would have covered up a lot of this detail. And also notice how I'm using just a slow, continuous movement from side to side. This will keep any buildup from happening in one particular spot. With so much detail in this wicker, be sure that you move your spray gun back and forth in a continuous motion so that your paint isn't building up and dripping. There's no avoiding it. Even the neatest painters have to deal with drips. But here are a few quick tips to help you avoid at least a few of those drops. Take a screwdriver and a mallet and punch a few holes around the rim of the can. Now when your brush is wiped against the edge of the can, it will flow back into the can. Then when you put the lid on, this will cover the holes and keep your paint from drying out. And to protect your hands and face, put some moisturizer on. When it comes time to clean up, the paint will come off easier and the moisturizer will keep the paint from seeping into your pores. Wall-to-wall -wall carpeting can really be a problem when you're trying to paint your baseboards. It's next to impossible to keep the paint from getting on the carpet and just about as tough to get it off once it's on there. So here's a quick tip that will help you keep your carpets clean. Take some wide masking tape and tear off a usable length. Now we want to put the masking tape as close to the baseboard as we can get it right on top of the carpet so that we get those little threads of carpet. And you kind of want to tuck this down under the baseboard. Now I'm going to use a putty knife because that's going to get it down there just a little bit further. We're trying to keep the tape on the carpet but not on the baseboard. Then once you have it all tucked in, Take an old newspaper and attach it to the other end of your tape. Now this will protect your carpet out even further. You want to go around the entire area this way before you begin painting. And now you're ready to paint your moldings. Here's some quick tips on using spray paint. If you're painting a flat surface, you want to start at the side nearest you and work towards the opposite end. 
Now this may seem a little strange, but you do this because when you paint, you hold your can at an angle, and that causes overspray. So if you start at this end and work your way towards that end, then you cover your overspray as you go. If you were to do it the opposite way, then the overspray would actually land on your already painted areas and it would cause a pebbly texture. The easiest way to paint a chair is to flip it upside down and paint the rungs and the legs first, painting the inside surfaces and then the outside. Then all you have to do is flip it over and paint the back and the top. You know, a lot of times, touch-up paint jobs really only need a couple of drops of paint. So here's a quick tip for getting those tiny amounts where they need to go every time. Now all you really need is a plastic squeeze bottle and a funnel. Then just pour the paint after the very first time you've painted through the funnel into the squeeze bottle. Now you can go ahead and pour as much in there as you have and let it fill up the bottle. Now you want to be sure to label the bottle, making sure to note the room that you're painting in. Now you'll have a nice amount of paint for your future touch-ups. I'm just going to write on here, living room. Now all you have to do when you're ready to touch up that spot is just put a couple of drops of paint on your paintbrush or even a paper towel will work and then you can touch up the spot fast and easy. Most of us have at least a couple of half-empty paint cans that we've stored in our storage closets, basements, or even garages. And we know that we kept that paint because we think that it's good paint. But what we don't know usually is how much paint is in here without prying off the lid. Now that can sometimes be more of a chore than we anticipated because the dried paint could have sealed it more tightly and we run the risk of not being able to get it back on as tight as it was. So here's a quick tip for you to avoid that step. Just take a look to see how much paint is on the inside before you close your paint can up. Then just take a marker and make a line on the outside right at the paint line. Now all you have to do is take a quick glance at your can to see if there's enough paint in there for your next project. No matter how much care you take, leftover paint always seems to collect some dust and dirt. So here's a quick tip on how to get your paint ready for use. Just take a scrap piece of aluminum window screen and put it over the top of a clean bucket. Make a slight depression in the middle so that your screen forms a dip for your paint. Now pour your paint over the screen into the clean bucket. If you only fill your bucket about halfway full, you'll find that it's easier to work with. Now when you're finished, just take a rag and blot the excess paint off the top of the screen after it's all filtered through. Then to clean your screen, you can use mineral spirits if you're using oil-based paint or just water if you're using latex-based paint. Now you can also use a fiberglass screen, but it is a little bit more flimsy than aluminum screen, so you'll want to tape it around the outside of your bucket so that the middle doesn't sag down and fall into your paint. Either screen works great and your paint will be clean and ready for your project.